Hey, I'm Jake, and for this video, I want to discuss why I use Logic Pro X and Ableton Live 9. So, there are two main reasons why I used uh, why I use Ableton Live 9. The first is the session view, which allows me to do two things. It gives me the chance to perform my music outside of just using a backing track, and it gives me the session view, which is what this this uh, layout is called. So this layout is the session view and it allows me to test out ideas. That was the first perk, but the the smoking gun for me was the browser. And I know that might sound a bit weird, but I think that Ableton's browser suits my workflow pretty well. It gives me what I want. So let me demonstrate how the browser is organized in Logic Pro X. If I want to pull up any channel strip settings, I press Y, and that gives me this library. Libraries are different from presets. If you want to pull up a preset, you have to open up an instrument and go to factory default, and now you have your presets. When you open up a preset, it also converts into showing the presets over here, but for the most part, it sticks to the channel strip settings. Okay, so that's one way of getting our instruments. The other way that I just showed you was pulling up the mixer. I press X. When you make an instrument, you have the chance of, well, you have the option of, of changing the instrument, and you can dig presets through there. Okay. Now I'm going to open up my file browser, my, uh, I think this is called the media browser, and this is where I save my samples. So I had to organize this, and now when I type kick, it shows up. All well and good. If I want my loops or Apple's loops, I click O, which shows me the loop section. And that's how we navigate Logic Pro X's many different sound options. Also, with a mixer, you guys already know, there, you can uh, pull up the plugins. The reason why I'm explaining this, and it's important to explain this, is because this is the core difference, I think, for my workflow between Logic Pro X and Ableton. Everything I was just navigating in Logic can be found in Ableton using just the browser. If I want a compressor, so I open it up, I press Command F, and then I type compressor. I have a glue compressor, a compressor, and I have the presets all in this little browser. I press Command Find, com uh, Command F, delete it, I type kick. I can find all my kick samples. You get the point. Uh, hold on. Okay, now I'm going to type operator, which is one of the stock synthesizers within Ableton Live, and boom, it shows up. Now, this is really useful for finding anything, but the biggest, the biggest thing about this browser is that you can also command find third-party plugins, which is something you can't really do in Logic unless you do a workaround in your plugin organization. So I have complete 10 by native instruments, so I can use Massive, the Massive Synthesizer. I also have Silent 1. So I would just type Silent 1, and it's there. Whereas in Logic, I would have to open a new instrument, click my instrument, go down here, go to Leonard Digital, and then click Silent. Now obviously I can save this as a channel strip preset and get it from my user library but you kind of see how fast the browser in Ableton works. And that's one of the reasons why I bought Ableton, because I love its organization method. Now, another thing, the biggest sell for me is drum workflow. Now, this is very personal, but you guys were asking why I chose Ableton, so I'm going to show you, and I'm going to try to explain this as best as I can. All right. So let's say I'm browsing through samples, right? In Logic Pro X, what I would do is I would press F, open up my file browser. This is where I keep my custom samples. Then I would type kick. I'd scroll down, find a kick I want. Let's say I want this. So I double click it and it would show up as an audio file in my arrangement view. Then I would press uh, Control E to make it into a sampler track. Then I would have to delete this audio file. Only now can I start doodling with the drum arrangement. Okay. So 
if I wanted to pitch this, as you know, when you convert things to a sampler, you can't do that. So obviously, a lot of people know this, but you can go into the EXS24, you can click Edit, and you can scale this by doing this. Click, press Save. I thought this was fast for working with single drum samples or like one shots that I found over the internet, through the internet, but when I tried Ableton's demo, this is what happens. So I'm making a new MIDI track. I type kick. All the kicks, stock kicks and my sample kicks are all here. So let's say I want that one, right? When I press enter, it automatically goes into a sampler and then I can click one shot because I want it to be a one shot drum sample. And when I press anything, <coughs> it already works, but it's also scaled. Then I have these warp options. So these warp options allow me to keep certain elements of my sample. Uh, and depending on the sample, certain warp modes will work better than others. I'm obviously not fluent. I'm more fluent with logic. But this kind of the, the workflow in Ableton suits me when I want to work with my own samples. Okay. Now, there, there are reasons why I stick to logic still. One of, the th one of the reasons is obviously because I've been using Logic, but here's one thing about Ableton that it, I wouldn't say I don't like, it's just a bit different for me, okay? So when I open up the, the instrument, this is a sampler instrument, I actually can't scale it. When I open up the EXS24, I can move it around and I can scale it. Now that might not be a big deal and I don't think that was Ableton's focus. I think their focus was having a unified design that worked fast and worked well for DJs or any person who wanted to experiment with sound and perform live. This makes a lot of sense to me because you need a unified background. You, yeah. But anyhow, you can scale this. And the next thing is you have a great mixer in Logic Pro X. So I'm going to open up one of my you know, kind of bigger files. Okay, so let's say I open this up. The mixer is top down, and you guys are well aware of that. I'll show you the mixer of uh, Ableton. Let me just, I'm not as fast. Don't save. Pardon me for the slow load. But anyhow, this is top down. So you see all the mixing plugins right here. And it's a pretty, uh, what I would call a holistic interface for mixing. Whereas in Ableton, this is my song. And if I pull up my mixer or a mixing view, I can't really view each plugin. Now, I am aware, thanks to a site called Sonic Bloom, and I'm not being promoted or any shit like that, or I'm not doing advertisements, but I know that you can put a te text script to show the plugins that are being used, but I don't have them right now. So anyhow, if I want to open up the plugins, oh my god, it's, it's left to right. That's very new to me. I'm not saying it's bad, it's just very new. And as someone who started first with mixing, I'm very used to this. And the reason why I like this is because if I want to test out the raw sounds when I'm mixing, I can do an AB where I turn off all my plugins and turn them back all on. I can't really do that with Ableton. So I would say that for my workflow right now, I do I have an easier time mixing in Logic Pro X than I do in Ableton, but that does not mean that Logic is better for mixing than Ableton. Remember, I think I think it's all a matter of choice and the word design gets thrown around a lot, but design is about utility, I think. And Ableton gives allows me to utilize certain creative processes that Logic would take more time to do with. So, the other thing that I like about Logic Pro X is the fact that I think this is well known. Logic Pro X has a pretty good library. This might be why they haven't been so welcoming with handling third-party 
VSTs or samples. When I say welcoming, I mean not as integrated as their stock sounds. Whereas in Ableton, it's pretty integrated. And I'm gonna guess why, I'm not too sure, but in Ableton, you have these things called packs. And with Ableton Live Suite, when you buy it, it comes with these quote unquote stock packs. Like these are the packs that come with it. Logic Pro X comes with their instruments. However, there's a bit of a difference. I noticed that the stock packs, some of them, for example, Loop Masters mixtape, some of them are from third party sources, maybe most of them, Instant House by Alex Kidd. So I can tell that Ableton Live is a very collaborative company, whereas Logic Pro X is a very contained company. Um, they want to make sure that you have your bread and butter and you work from there. Whereas with Ableton, I think it's more about experimentation and collaboration. I, that's why they have Ableton Link, which kind of syncs uh, other, other iOS devices to your Ableton session. I'm getting off tangent here, sort of. But my point is, I use Ableton because in the future, I do plan on performing live and I would like to have the option of having more control over my sets. For certain sets, that's important to me as an aspiring independent artist. Now, why I use Logic Pro X is because it's easier for me to test out mixing ideas. So if I need a mix for somebody, I'm probably going to use Logic Pro X. If I need to doodle quickly, I'm going to use Ableton. And the last thing is, if I have an idea in my mind... I work faster in Logic, whereas if I have no idea and I need to come up with something really quick, I'm probably going to use Ableton. Now, I'm not convincing you to use Ableton or Logic, I'm just explain I'm explaining to you where I'm coming from and why I'm using two DAWs in my live stream. So, my last point would be that there's this thing that goes around and people say you should learn one DAW or you should learn to use multiple DAWs. This is where I'm gonna give you my take. I think you should learn one DAW first because you'll know what's missing in your workflow and what you would like to change. And when I found out after using Logic for some time, I never said, I never felt as though Ableton was better. I just felt as though it kind of filled these workflow uh, nuisances, what well, kind of a workflow nuisance that I had with Logic, which was working with third party instruments and third and outside source samples. Anyhow, I'm doing my best to answer your questions and I hope this video helped. I'm actually undecided, so tell me what you guys think about Logic and Ableton or any other DAW. These are just the two that I've used. Anyhow, take care.